Today, we're checking out a guitar from Sweetwater, and it's a Reverend guitar. Normally, I would tear this foam thing out, but I have to, like I said, I have to put it back. So I want it to go, whoa, look at that. Except for it's got a big card in front of it. What does this card say? The card says that it was inspected by Tony and the 55 point inspection and what was marked off. I will film me going over it and then I will put that on the Film Ignite 2 channel. I'll put the link in the description and it will be me talking about what the 55 point inspection of this guitar is. Here we go, let's get some specifications on this guitar. It uses a roasted maple neck, which you can tell is lightly roasted, which I prefer. I've talked about this when the roasted neck thing happened, thing being the kind of like craze, everybody went roasted. Uh, what I learned is I bought, I personally purchased at least a half a dozen, if not more. You guys watching the channel probably know the exact number. Uh, I felt like it was at least 10 personal guitars that had roasted necks. And what I learned from my personal experience is the darker they are, the least I like them. There seemed to be a uh, the quality seemed to be better. Obviously, the idea of drying the neck out even more seemed to be a good idea in quality. But the darker the roasting on the neck, the more likely they are, or more easily, they get nicked and chipped. So on the darker roasted necks, one thing I don't like is you lightly bump them into something and you get a really deep nick into the wood and you can fix it. I have a video on that. So I like this. I, I think the, the idea of roasting the maple is a great idea. I love it. I love the fact that they're just doing it lightly. They're using a pow ferro neck. Basically, it's harder is what I've learned. Uh, working with it, cutting on it, sanding on it over the years, it's a little harder than rosewood. Uh, so maybe it lends to a brighter sound. It's possible. Again, it depends on how much you believe or disbelieve in the tone wood thing. I don't really kind of argue those points. I just tell you what I've personally experienced with the experiences I have. It's a little brighter. The body is Karina. So it's light. I'll post the weight of this guitar right there or somewhere right here. Now, what do we have next? I forget the brand of these locking keys. You see them everywhere now. They're very inexpensive. You can buy them on Amazon. I literally have $3,000 custom shop guitars that were sent to me with those same tuning keys. These are becoming more and more popular. I just know them from this look. Like I said, uh, good enough. I've never seen or had a problem personally with any of them. They say that it's designed and set up by Reverend in the USA. If you're doing the math with me, there's the original employee QA that's gotta get out of the factory. <laughs> then you got the Reverend person who's checking it out. Then you got the first inspection at Sweetwater and then you got the secondary inspection at Sweetwater. There's four people have made sure this guitar is perfect. It's a high standard to put on a guitar. I, I'm gonna have to hold you guys to it. Other specifications on the guitar is it has a medium oval neck shape, which we'll check in the geeky stuff. The neck joint is a six way bolt on. In other words, it has six screws instead of four. It has a 12 inch radius fretboard. It has dot inlays with 22 nickel frets on a 25 and a half inch scale with a bonite nut, which is basically like synthetic bone measured out at about 1.69 inches at the nut. For electronics, they have a three-way toggle switch, a master volume, a master tone, and a bass contour control. Two HA5 humbuckers, which they are saying are slightly hotter PAF style pickups. It has a tunematic bridge with a stop bar tailpiece and a polyurethane finish. So let's go through it. I wanna talk about some of the things you see with guitars since this guitar is supposed to be perfect at that four step level. A lot of times issues I see with guitars right here, this is the biggest problem uh, you get when they sand on the back of the neck. They spend all their time where your hand touches, sanding and making sure this is great. And then they get to these spots right here and they just kinda of do it real fast and then they just buff off and then they call it and you can see sanding marks. No marks there at all. Looks good. A lot of times you'll see sanding marks around here because really don't really spend, again, a lot of time where the hand isn't touching. Another area right here, right here, especially on Fender guitars even, uh, you see it, it's usually common the most on Squires. You see it the absolute most. Not only is your hand not touching there, they know that you're not looking there, but also it's an awkward place. You're kind of using your, your, your sandpaper and your thumb and you're kind of just getting in there and you kind of want to be done with it. This, this is easy. This is sandpaper on the hand. Remember, guitars are, are made by CNC's, but they're hand finished, you know, with sandpaper and buffing by, by humans. And so they'll, they'll sand this way and then they just get in here. All of this is flawless, not a single mark. Let's look at the nut. Now, of course, we're gonna check it to see how it was cut. Now, as you know, I make these nut testing tools. These are made by me. They look like 
tremolo arms. Uh, it's because I use the caps of a tremolo arm. Uh, and what I do is I take fret wire, every kind of gauge of fret wire, radius it in different radiuses, different thicknesses. I use my caliper. I kind of find out what frets on the guitar. I find one of these that I have that match that fret wire that also match the radius of the fretboard. In this case, it's this one. And what I do is I slide it right behind the nut. Now I do this on guitars I work on to create essentially a zero fret. What I want is this tool, this fret wire, to sing perfectly when it's right behind, like I said, it's right behind the nut. You can hear it now through my, my lapel mic. It's not causing any issues with the guitar. Take it out, right? So think of this, it's right there. It's not making any noise, it's not rattling. And yet if I relieve my, take my hand, it won't move. Uh, that means the slots were cut perfectly. This is just something I learned over years. I wanted something to check my work when I was doing nut slots. And I found one day when I was working on a guitar with a zero fret that all the strings just lay on the fret. So I thought, well, why don't I just do that? Now that we checked that, let's check the setup. This guitar is on the 12 fret is 1.75 millimeters. 1.75 is fine, two is acceptable. I'm showing 10 to 46 gauge strings. Action seems really good. Let's check the fret ends. What I wanted was to consistently tell you guys in every video if a company was doing really nice fret end work, not so much just fret sprout, but how good it is. And I found the nylon sock test works really, really effectively for illustrating that. This is just for you guys. Uh, so again, run it through this and holy crap. That is flawless. <laughs> I'm gonna do that again. I'm okay. That's that's literally flawless. Let's do the top. Ah, see top in my experience usually a little bit not as good as the bottom. Or I should say bass side versus treble side. And again, now you can see just a little bit of marks, just a little bit. So perfect. <laughs> so I will say perfect. Um, yeah might be the best ones we've seen on the channel. Now, again, four people have claimed to have inspected this guitar. That's what I expected. So although I would say this is perfect, I would also say it should be expected. All right, <laughs> so we did that. Uh, now checking the frets, what I find is, is that I like to do the note test, play each note. Okay. I did not hear a single dead note. Every note rang true acoustically, which is also what I want you to do. Do it acoustically. In other words, flawless fretwork on the guitar. Let's test the pickups. They're saying these are PAF style pickups that are wound just a little hot. That is the sweet spot for me. Uh, as you guys know, I make my own pickups and that's kind of the design of pickups I go with. I love a PAF pickup. It's my favorite uh, style pickup. It's like the magic pickup for me uh, to my ears, but I like it just a little hotter, just a little bit. So I want to see what they're saying when they say that. The bridge pickup is saying 13.9K resistance. That seems a little bit on the hotter. A lot of resistance uh, usually implies more wire and more wire usually leads us to a hotter pickup. Of course, there's other factors like how big the mag magnet is, what type of magnet they use, whether it was Alnico 2, 3, 4, or 5. There's a lot of factors besides just this reading. So don't always go just off this reading. I would like uh, PF style pickup to me would be like nine to 10K on the high end. So this is a little hot. We're going to the neck, 7.73K. So again, a little, that's all, that would to me would be more like the PAF. So when they say these are like PAFs a little hotter, my guess is the bridge is wound a little hotter. It's a little bit extra winds on there, probably to give it a little bit more kick, a little more bite snap a little harder, get you through the, get the amp moving a little bit if you're using a tube amp, and then you go to the neck and then it seems like it's more traditional PF style pickup. That would be my, what my thoughts are on that. So we'll have to see when we play it. Let's talk about the neck carve itself. This is the 62 Strat shape template. And what I'm seeing is it's very, very, very close. The neck uh, has a little less on the shoulders. In other words, so 62 Strat, which is a thinner Fender Strat neck profile, uh, it, and this one's just a little narrower on the edges. In other words, the shoulder comes in more like a C. So it's more dramatic as a C. So, so uh, if you're familiar with that. So if you ever played a vintage reissue 60s uh, Strat, that would be, the neck is gonna be very familiar to that. If you played a Fender uh, made in Mexico or USA uh, standard Strat series, 
this is going to be like that, but a little smaller and narrower. It's like they sanded the shoulders a little bit. Now, something to be aware of is that whenever the shoulders are narrower on the neck, in other words, the curve of the neck like this is coming in, it's a little narrow. It could be because somebody was more aggressive on the sanding in the factory. So as I often say on the channel, your mileage may vary. In other words, you might get the same guitar and your neck not be as narrow on the sides because again, all it takes is a little less aggressive sanding and that uh, changes dramatically. Next, we're gonna do what's called the handshake. That's where you hold the neck right here and I wanna see how it feels. So although it's not very comfortable to hold it right here, it's not as uncomfortable as the Fender where they don't taper this at all on the standard kind of neck plate. So again, more comfortable there. So better than Fender, but not great. How I put that. I love, absolutely love the triple string tree. So this is what I, I, I think is the perfect string tree on the market. If you're interested in these, you can find these at stumac.com as well. There might be other places, but I've seen them on their website. This string tree is genius. What they do is they're using a triple string tree that holds down your E, B, and G string. And I love that because those are the three that you really got to worry about, right? At the point, by the time you get to the D string, the distance between the nut to the tuning key is not that extreme. And these are tapered tuning keys. In other words, these tuning keys are, the uh, these two are taller and then the four are, are lower. It's well thought out. It's probably the best string tree I've ever seen. So, and uh, like I said, I've seen it aftermarket. I've installed it on a few customers' guitars. And uh, the fact that it comes standard on this guitar is fantastic. As of filming this video, this guitar is 1,000 US dollars. It does not come with a gig bag or a case. I, I know a lot of you will say, hey, it should come with a case. I don't disagree. I wish it came with a gig bag. It seems like guitars at a thousand bucks, even in this day and age and market, should still be coming with gig bags. Since it's an odd shape, it's not like you're gonna find a whole lot of cases that fit it. You know, it'd be nice to have a gig bag. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go through the sounds. So let's go ahead and start with my 65 Deluxe Reverb. I have it mic'd up with an, a uh, SM57 mic and a room mic. So you have essentially a three, uh, three-way switch which has no coil splitting ability, your volume and tone control. Up top here is this bass contour switch. And uh, let's start with the neck since we're on clean, okay? Now, this is what I gotta tell you I like about this. If I put this in the middle position of these pickups and turn the bass, uh, not all the way, don't get too carried away, maybe 80% of the way. So again, 80% of the travel. You really get this amazing acoustic sound uh, that I really like. Love this idea of this control because what you do is you tend to change your playing style with this one control. For instance, when I find it's on the bass here side, I want to just do chords where I just kind of sustain them. When it's on the brighter side, I kind of want to play a little, not faster, but just have more of an attack in this, kind of like the. Now we have a uh, Friedman Dirty Shirley running through a 112 vintage 30 cabinet. Let's see what this guitar can do. We're gonna start with the bridge pickup, which we know is now a little hotter PAS sounding. Thank you. 
Okay, so now we're gonna go something a little bit more aggressive. We're gonna use the Engel Iron Ball SE. So again, a, a beautiful instrument to give you freedom of different styles to play. Other things worth mentioning and the final thoughts, the arm carve and the belly cut out on the guitar. That's something that's really cool. The overall fit and finish of the guitar is very nice. The wood looks like a decent piece of wood. The binding is clean. I don't see any mistakes on the binding or any other finish flaws that are sticking out to me. The clay dots are a discolored, uh, kind of like tan brown look to them, which really plays into the finish of the guitar. Something else I thought was interesting was I kept staring at the uh, headstock in the in the monitor and uh, I, I kind of saw this. And once you kind of see it, you can't unsee it. I'm gonna show it to you right now, uh, which is I, I kind of never saw it as being an actual Fender headstock. I kind of saw it as a being a Fender inspired, but really it's the smaller Fender headstock with that little cutout, which is, I don't know, I kind of think that's cool. This one is probably one of my favorite ones I've played from Reverend. I think of me personally, if I wanted one of these, I would want something a little bit more flashy. I kind of like the, you know, when it plays on the kind of a, that crazy, crazier vibe with the sparkle finishes and all that stuff, that's really cool. And as always, I want to thank all of you for hanging out to the end of the video. As you guys know, it really helps the channel when you do that. And uh, I really appreciate it very much. I also want to thank the Sweetwater guys for sending out the guitar and giving us this opportunity. They're going to be sending out some more instruments and the others will be doing some giveaways with because those don't have to go back. So we can actually do some giveaways for you guys. As always, I want to thank all of you for your time. Till the next time, know your gear. Thank <laughs> you.